This is Carl at National RV Detroit, and I'm going to walk you through this 2019 uh, Flagstaff Microlite travel trailer, and the model number is 25DKS. Okay, now this is not a floor plan or a, uh, a uh, sales video, it's a how to video. So I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work, okay? All right. So this is just storage here. Of course, you have a power awning with LED strip. Okay. Um, you do get a, a grill with it, which is right here. And uh, the grill hangs right here on this rack or sits on a table, whichever you prefer. And then you can use this quick connect right here to connect it to the LP system. Very simple. All right. You also have a bracket for a TV. Um, and you have power and signal out right here. This is the service panel for your refrigerator. This, this hose should always be hanging out. That's for condensation that's generated by the, the cooling process. Um, you got outside speakers. That's the vent for your furnace. You have regular stabilizers on it, just scissor type that take a three quarter inch socket or crank. This one comes with a crank. You can see it right back there, hopefully. All the way to the other end, you're going to see your, um, your dump hose. That's the rack for the grill right there, leaning up against that. Um, this is your hitch. It's a Husky centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control. So it's a good one. We'll show you how that operates when you pick up. Alrighty. This is just a hookup for a solar panel. If you wanted to get a portable solar panel to charge your battery, that's where you would plug it in right there. All right, you have a power tongue jack to raise and lower it. Also, if the power tongue jack was to fail, you can pull this plug right out of the top here and use your, your three-quarter inch crank to crank this uh, up and down manually. So you can always get hitched and unhitched. You got two LP tanks, which are full. Automatic changeover regulator. This is your um, deep cycle marine battery, and so we know, I don't know if I can get so I can show you here, if you can see it, but here, let me try pulling this up, if I can do it, let's get my camera work, okay, you see that, that key right there, that's the battery kill switch, so you can actually shut the battery off when you put it into storage if you want to, okay, um, coming over here to the, to the water hookups, this is the city water hookup. This is the most common way to get water to the trailer. You just hook it up, turn it on, and you're all set. Now, if you're going to a campground that doesn't have plumbing on the campsite, um, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here and then use the onboard pump to pump the water. So even if you don't have city water, if you, as long as you fill your tank, everything is going to work as though you have city water. So if you, have, if you do have city water, you don't have to worry about the tank or the pump at all. Okay. This is the dry antifreeze into the system. That's something you'll have to educate yourself about a bit if, you're, if you don't know and you're, and you're going to winterize the trailer yourself. Okay, this is your water heater. It works on both gas and electric. Um, thing to know is this, this rocker switch right down here. I don't know if you can see very well, but it says on and off. Okay, that controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover right here. So keep in mind to turn on the electric heating element you have to flip that to on. Always make sure there's water in the water heater tank before you turn that on, or otherwise you'll burn out the, uh, the uh, heating coil in it, so. Okay, now, or the electrode, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, this is gas, obviously, so you can run it on gas also. Uh, the switch to operate that is inside. I'll show you that when we get inside. Um, this is where you drain it right here takes an inch and a sixteenth six-point socket in order to uh, in order to take that plug out. The plug has an anode rod attached to it so it's long um, but uh, like I said when you when you want to drain it let's say you're 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 you went camping in the spring but you're not going to go camping again to the fall well you'd want to drain the water out of it then so it doesn't get stagnant in there okay and of course before you winterize it or after while you're winterizing, part of winterizing is, is, is draining the, the water tank on the hot water heater, too, so, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. 
fresh water drain is down there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's there. Slide room. Now, this right here is the vent for the range hood, uh, the fan that's over the range. Uh, if you're going to be running the fan to vent to the outside, you have to open this baffle up like this so it flaps freely. Otherwise, it won't vent to the outside. So if you're venting to the outside, you want that flapping freely. Otherwise, when you're, when you're traveling or in storage, you just want it shut like that. Okay? You have a 30-foot, 30 30-amp 30 cord. We give you a reducer. We reduce it down to a 20 so you can plug it in at home when you're packing up and things like that. Um, this is your cable and satellite through. This, these are your low point drains that has to do with uh, wind rising. It's the lowest point of the plumbing. Um, your gray tank valve, which is sink and shower water. And of course your black tank uh, valve, which is to toilet water and waste. We just flushed it out so it's still dripping a bit. But we uh, we uh, took it over and, and, and flushed it out and, and cleaned it as best we possibly can. So. Um, it's showing, you're getting an accurate reading right now on your, on your monitor panel. It's showing empty. All the tanks are, are reading accurately. So, um, While we're talking about that, if you come over here to the back, this is the black tank flush right here. So after you dump your tanks, you open up the black tank valve and leave it open, like it says on the sticker here. Then you can hook your uh, water hose right up to here and then turn it on. This is the black tank flush. So it'll spray out the inside of your black tank. It'll clean off the sensor so you get an accurate reading from your monitor panel. So if, if your dump station has a working hose that hasn't been run over or something, uh, always use it. It's the best way to, to go. It'll keep the tank and the sensors reading accurately, okay? Um, all right, so this is just a, uh, a uh, sprayer right here hot and cold water to spray down kids and dogs and bikes and feet or whatever you whatever you have to spray um, this is pre-wired for a backup camera so if you want to get a Furion camera that fits in that housing you'll have a backup camera it's already pre-wired um, you have a ladder which is a great thing because the manufacturer states every 90 days you should inspect your seals your roof seals basically any place you see sealant from the factory you should inspect so you're going to go up there, look around, you'd be very careful, of course. Make sure there's no cracking or separation. We've been up there, it's good and tight, so it's a, it's a tight trailer, it hasn't been leaking. Um, but you have to do maintenance on it, maintenance consists of inspecting it, and if you ever see any cracking or separation, to take care of it immediately, that's important. Also, you're going to look at the roofing attachments and the roofing material to make sure that it wasn't damaged by... Uh, uh, low branches or road debris flying up there, that sort of thing. Just give it a good look over and um, you'll always be ahead of it, no matter what. So you're just protecting your investment. Okay, so let's go inside. Okay, so this is actually the second door. The, the panel's at the other door, so these are your keys right here. I'm going to hang them right on this hook right here. For you. All right, so obviously your bed and you have storage underneath. The bed flips up, so you got some storage underneath there. Um, you have a vent, which is great. Um, the lights that don't turn on with a switch have a button in the middle, like so. Okay. Uh, you have your charging center here for for USB and there's also also a cigarette lighter charger there. All right. Um, your control panel is right here. So, I know it's kind of dark here. Let me see if I can get some more light here. Okay. So, um, your slide out switch is right here, in and out. Your awning, extended retractor is right here. Never leave it out unattended. If, it need, if you need, uh, um, if you're leaving the campsite, make sure you roll it in. Okay, just don't leave it out unattended. These are your lights here. Um, your water pump is right here, if you're gonna use it. The water pump is used, remember to pump fresh water out of the tank. It's also used to, to winterize the trailer. Um, now, you, you let your water heater on gas right here. See, it's got a fault right there. You also have another electric switch here. Remember I told you there's another one in the lower left-hand corner outside? So always remember that there's two switches, okay? And uh, then when you check your levels, batteries charged, um, fresh water has a little bit of water in it because we're prepping it. Uh, black and gray tanks are both empty. So that's a good, giving you an accurate reading.
Okay, so this couch jackknifes flat, so you can turn it into a bed if you need to. This table folds up and sits on these cleats here, so you can use the back cushions, turn it into another bed. Always travel with this table in the down position. You don't want it to bounce around and break something, so it's got Velcro on it. Just make sure you always collapse it down before you travel. I didn't even look in the drawers yet to see what we've got, if anything, in here. I didn't actually prep this. Yeah, so that's just more storage. Um, your radio or sound here is 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 uh, pretty pretty basic, but it does have Bluetooth on it. It has three speaker zones. One and two are inside the trailer. Um, three is outside the trailer. Um, you have a disc player, obviously, an AM, FM radio, um, USB. You got an HDMI in, so and it actually got an SD card reader even on it. So you have all that. Keep in mind now that this is see how this is green right here this this little led there's a switch below you can turn it on or off if you're using the antenna you want that to be on glowing green otherwise you won't get a good picture that's the signal booster for the digital antenna okay this is the antenna crank right here you go up this way and then when it's up you can pull down on this disc and you can actually rotate the whoops sorry better camera work here you can rotate the it on the antenna on the roof plus you can raise it up or down just make sure you lower it before you hit the road. That's important. Um, but like I said, always have leave the signal booster on when you're using it. This is your, your thermostat. It's analog. It's very simple. Cool, fan, off, and heat. Heat is the LP furnace. Uh, fan is the air conditioner running without the compressor, and cool is full air conditioning. Uh, when it comes to the fan, always leave it on auto. That's the best way to run it. Okay. So let's see what next. This is a gas absorption refrigerator. It, uh, it works on AC power or on LP gas. So really what you want to do is set it to auto like it is right now. You can change it. You can put it on gas. That's on and off right there. But if you put it on auto, um, it'll automatically seek out and sense electricity. So it'll, it'll run off of it. If it can't find it, it'll automatically switch over to gas so it'll spoil your food. Let's say you have a, a power failure at the campground and you're away exploring somewhere, well, it'll, it'll sense that and it'll light it on gas so you, uh, you don't spoil your food. So auto's the way to go. And you have a freezer, of course, and, uh, and, and your refrigerator. This device, or these devices down here, this one is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If it's not green, get it serviced. That's important. This is your uh, power converter. So what this does, it takes a regular 120 AC, comes on this side, you got regular circuit breakers like you'd see at home, and they're all labeled, right? So this is the distribution center, so to speak. And then the power is converted to 12 volt DC. On this side, you got 12 volt fuses, and they're all labeled, right? So that's where the 12 volt comes from. This is also a battery tether, so as long as you're plugged in, it's gonna sense how much energy your battery up front has and needs, and if it's topped off, it'll just trickle a couple amps to maintain it. If it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to charge the battery. So when you're pulling your trailer down the road, your tow vehicle's um, alternator will be charging the battery, and then when you're plugged in, this will charge the battery. Also keep in mind, if you lose your 12 volt side, like all the 12 volt power goes off uh, from a wild power surge or something like that, always look at these 240s right here, because that's where the problem's almost always at it. Those are, those are, those, those fuses protect, protect the whole 12 volt side. So if they pop, they're just doing their job. So always look there first, and the odds are that's where the problem would be. Okay, let me shut it. It also has a fan inside that'll kick on and off. You can barely hear it, but it's there. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. A microwave works like any other microwave, of course. This is your range hood. I told you about the baffle on the outside, remember? So if you're running a fan, you want that baffle open so it flaps freely. You also have a light here. Um, always keep this glass top closed or in the down position when you're traveling so it doesn't break. This is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark it. Um, and three burners and three knobs. So let me see if we can, if he's got the gas on here. I don't think he does. Oh, I guess he does. So it's that simple. You just uh, turn this clockwise and spark it. Now the oven is a little different. There's, this oven looks like it's never been used, but we see that all the time. It's not, that's not, not uncommon. 
Um, there's a pilot light all the way to the back. You need a long neck lighter like a grill lighter um, so you can reach that pilot light and light it. Um, what you do is you'll go to pilot right here. Then you depress it. You keep it depressed during the whole lighting procedure. Then you're going to spark it with your lighter till it lights back there. After it lights, and you see it light, you hold it for another 10 seconds or so to heat up the thermocouple. Then you're going to go to operating temperature. Um, keep in mind when you shut it off, the flame goes out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. Alright, so that's that, that, that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look in the bathroom here. So, um, your shower works like any other shower, obviously. Um, sink works like any other sink. Uh, this is a GFCI here, so all the plugs in the trailer are wired through this GFCI, even the one on the outside, so keep that in mind. If you're using a, something outside and it pops it, you're going to reset it here. This toilet has a flush pedal right here, if you can see it. Um, now you can't use it dry. By dry I'm talking about the black tank which is directly below, right? So, um, what you do after you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. You'll come in here, you'll put one dose of chemical right in the bowl. Then you'll step on the pedal and hold it down until at least a gallon, along with the chemical, washes into the black tank below. You can't use it dry. If you do, the smell will be overwhelmingly terrible. It's the type of thing you'll only do once anyway, and um, uh, it also can get clogged up. So you always want to have a, at least a gallon of water in there plus a dose of chemical, okay? Your, your fan is a four-speed fan. It's really good. Um, it's self-explanatory. You have the buttons, and then you have up and down, of course, for the, for the lid on it. Now, people always know, well, you know, one of the other ways you can use this fan, let's, let me put it that way, is if you've got a bunch of people over and it's the time of year where you're starting to get condensation from your breath, if you just turn that on low, you can, won't hear it running and it'll pull all the condensation out of the trailer. So keep in mind that anytime you're in that situation, you just run that fan. Also, um, when you're running the shower, always run the fan too because it'll pull the humidity right out of the trailer so you don't create an environment where mold or mildew could grow. So you vent it out that way, and um, and as you can see, you won't have any problem. This trailer, if you look at it, it's solid as a rock. It's, uh, it's been taken care of for sure. Um, let me see if there's anything else here that I forgot. I think I got it all. The rest of it's just storage, things like that. Um, let me look real quick. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, so that about covers it. You also have a smoke detector here, by the way. Um, so... Uh, first of all, thanks for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Um, keep in mind what I told you about inspecting the roof and the uh, any place you see caulk from the factory on the trailer, but pay special attention to the roof. You're just protecting your investment. Every trailer ever made needs to be inspected regularly, and that's just a fact. And the other fact is most people don't seem to inspect it enough, so just take a few minutes out of your day, check it out, or have someone else go up there if you're not feel if you don't feel good about going up there you can walk on the roof no problem um, so you wanna you wanna make sure that it's good and tight on the roof and no damage and uh, if you see any issues don't don't use car from the hardware store go to the uh, an RV storing store and get something that's a lap sealant for this called uh, Dicor you'll use that and then if it's anything on the side you'll use uh, another product called Proflex don't use hardware store caulk it's not good enough okay um, and last but not least uh, this trailer is now dewinterized. That means all the antifreeze has been pushed out of the system, purged from the system, and replaced with fresh water. So it's all ready to be camped in right now. Okay? Thank you.